I fell in love with giving service. I fell in love with the people I take care of. I fell in love with the job. I think for me it's a passion for uh, dealing with the elders and just um, just giving them like their daily living, um, doing the daily living activities with them. It's a, such an opportunity and I'm so grateful to have that moment with them. I like to engage with people and talk to them and care for them. See, being a PSW, it's not just a job. It's more like you take these people as your family, so you build relationships and you form relationships with your residents and with the family members, not to mention your colleague. So to me, the environment is more like a family setting environment, and if you don't have love and care, then there's no sense being in it. I have mothers, fathers, uncle, and you know, they treat me like, because I'm one of the younger um, person that works there and everybody's like family. What I love most about my career is the clients I take care of. I might be the only person they see for the day. I might be the only person who brings a bit of happiness. I might be the only person that shows them any form of compassion, any form of love. I might be the only person there for them. I have faced harassment during my career on many occasions, both from clients, co-workers, and from management. I'm an home care worker, so I work in the community, so I go from homes to homes, I go into different people's homes. So on one occasion, I did my call ahead as I mandated to, call the client, told them I was on, their way, on my way to her, and she said yes. When I got to her, she opened the door, took one look at me and decided that she didn't want the service because she was going out. This client was still dressed in her night clothes, house dress and slippers. So I knew she was going nowhere. I knew right there that it had to be because of what she was seeing standing in front of her. I experienced uh, harassment uh, when uh, my religion was not uh, respected. It was uh, one day they were doing an uh, intruder code and um, the way they dress up uh, the person, it dress up like somebody of my religion. And um, the words were spreading out that uh, there is a Muslim terrorist in the building as an intruder. So that's affect me really hard. I remember the first time I faced racism in my workplace. I was called a nigger. That hurt me to the core. I actually cried. I never thought that I would face, or I would be called something like that, because you might watch it on TV, you know, see it in movies, but I never thought that you would actually, you know, experience that in Canada, not to mention in the environment in which I was, which is a nursing home. But for the longest time, I thought my color was the wrong color to be. And that's an ugly thing. One should never have to feel that way because it affected me. It affected me so badly that even until today, I don't feel like I've even gotten over it. As a young single mother, I sometimes face discrimination in the workplace, especially when my kids are sick. I have to leave work to pick them up. And a lot of my coworkers don't really like that because now they're gonna have to take take up my work that I left over and they get upset. And one thing I usually try to say to them or you know, make that comment that, remember, you guys were once young before, had young kids, so you know what I have to go through. You guys already, already experienced that. It's more for my uh, coworker, Filipino coworkers. Um, most of them, I'm just fortunate to know English. And most of them, they don't hardly understand what the employer are trying to tell them. And um, at the end, they get the discipline without knowing why. So they come to see me and, and ask me why. I think everyone should take a step back. If every time you think you're being discriminated against, you act on it, then it will never change. Sometimes we just need to 
educate the person who is discriminating. Everybody needs a voice. Don't be scared, no matter what color you are, what age, um, race, because you know, if you don't talk up, nobody's gonna hear you. We have to embrace each other. It's not like everybody is the same. We are all coming from different areas, but uh, you have to respect each other. You have good people and you have bad people. This is the real world. Don't act like you don't know, you understand? But also, it's good to have a good attitude. And it's always good to know that, you know what? Even this phase will pass. So if you have a tough skin and a positive attitude, you'll make it. SEIU has been my rock, because Within my union, there are so many different races, religions, you know, sexual orientations, everything. So you're, you're asked to accept everybody. And when you come to events, you realize that you are accepted for you. You're not accepted because you're black, white, blue, pink, gay. Whatever you are, you are a brother or a sister. So within that, I've been given so many opportunities and I've learned that there's somewhere that you can call your safe haven. And that's my union. We are the union. Each individual that is a member, we are the ones that make up the union. We are the ones who is SEIU. So if we get involved and stop standing out there and just point fingers, we all can be strong together. We all can spread awareness.